Good evening, friends. How many of you have hearts that are full of thanksgiving and praise? Has the Lord been good to you? Let's give the Lord a big hand. I just like coming together and saying thank you, Lord. You have been so good to me. <clears throat> friends, it doesn't matter if there's trouble in the land, and there is. It doesn't matter if there's trouble in the world, and there is. We can still praise the Lord, can we not? I just love that. No matter what's happening in the world, God is still on his throne. And we can go to a Heritage Singer concert free and listen to some wonderful music. So we're excited that you're all here tonight. Thank you very much for being here. My name is Pastor Doug Mace. I am on staff here, and we have a lovely team that I just love and respect, and many of them are here tonight, and please say hi. We love, to, uh, we, we love to get to know our community. If you haven't worshiped with us here at Loma Linda University Church, please come and visit us. We want you to come and worship with us. How many are here for the very first time? First time that you came in to the University Church, look at that. Oh, praise the Lord, we're glad that you're here. We want you to feel a warm welcome to come and worship with us and be a part of our church life community. Uh, we we want to have a little fun this morning, or this evening. I'm still in church time. We're going to have a little fun. So <clears throat> Max loved to have fun, and I said this last time, but I miss Max. <laughs> do you miss Max? I do. I, I see his influence everywhere, everywhere we go, and uh, he loved to have fun. So we're going to have a little fun. Now, I need some help. Just uh, I need a helper, like a, just a little helper guy or something. Pastor Randy Roberts, will you come up? <laughs> I need somebody to hold the product. Oh, thank you, Randy. I didn't, I didn't really set him up for this, but I said, just be ready. Could you, <laughs> hold, could you hold those? Just hold them? Yeah. All right, I'll, yeah. I'll hold them. I just need someone to hold it while I, I do my work here. <laughs> <laughs> you want the me to just stand here? If you'll just stand there. Uh, and I've said this with you before, but Randy, I grew up with Heritage Singers. I did too. And, uh, Much after you, but I uh, did too. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I, was be I was racing to that joke before you got there. <laughs> but Randy and I actually found ourselves uh, on the, uh, in Panama City when the Heritage Singers came. Which I remember and he doesn't. I, anyway. Randy tells me that, that we knew each other then. I said, I don't think so. <laughs> I was busy. We did. <laughs> but we had a great time, and uh, I love serving on staff, Randy. And so uh, Max loved to have fun, so we're going to have some fun. I told my cousin Greg um, to get cue up four songs, and we're going to play Name That Tune. But you have to be a heritage aficionado. You have to be, I hate to use the word fanatic, but you have to really know your stuff. Who thinks they know their heritage singer songs? Okay, uh, I need another helper, our head elder. Richard, will you help me? Find four, thank you, uh, such a servant's heart. I need four people to come up here. This is, you're gonna come up. We're gonna, we're gonna see what you know. We're so gonna play a song. are coming up here to do it. All right, That's very right. good. We're gonna have you come up here. Richard's not having much success, Doug. Ray, yeah, all the hands went down. What happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Yeah, we need a couple to come up and to, uh, and to there you go. We have a volunteer. All right, very Rich, good. We have a volunteer and Dr. Geem there. This is Philip's mom, so that's Oh, good. good. Come on up. Come right on up. We're going to say it's Philip's sister, actually. Yeah. Come right on up. Dr. Geem, I know this man. Oh, good. Come on up. <laughs> Uh-oh. All right, Paul, right up here. Marina, come on. Here we go. Here comes another. All right, so we got four. Now, you all need to stand in between Doug and me, so come over here. Yeah, come over Paul. here. So what we're going to do is we're going to play a song, and it has no voices. It's just the background track. Oh, my goodness. But you'll recognize it, and they might need to call a friend. I don't know. <laughs> but we have a couple books, and Val gave us two brand-new CDs. Yes, excellent. One... The memorial to Max and then the Christmas. I love that. So, so if you know the name of this song, raise your hand, and we're going to see which one of you might recognize it. So the, there's no pressure. 
Okay. So you're talking about the first one of these four to raise their hand. First one of these to raise your hand with the name of the song. I know it, of course, but I want to know if you know it. Yeah, it's written down here. I know. I got that. <laughs> Greg, will you play this soundtrack to a song? Oh, you have to be recognized. Now you owe me an album. <laughs> but you are right. Did you know that? Was that right? You may have a book. We're going to give away a book there. Two, two. Uh, one book for her and one book for her. And you may go back to your seats. Let's give them a big hand. Thank you very much. Here we go. We still have two more to give away here. We got two more to give away. Let's see if I... Uh, okay, this one... If you know the song, raise your hand. Don't yell it out. Raise your hand. Here we go. That next cue. Raise them if you know. All right. Yell it out. Oh, my, what is it? My Lord and I. Somebody yelled that out. I know that. Greg Battler Very good. right there. Who would you like to give the free album to? <laughs> right here. <laughs> you choose. Uh, which one don't I have? This one. Oh, All right. right. Go back to your seat. All right, Oh, Paul. she's a good, she's a good Paul, player. Oh, it's just you, me, and Doug now. All right. I just wanted to say I would be able to sing song. Oh, that's all right. That's not what we asked you to do. So I appreciate your All right. Now, how are we going to give Paul his? Let's just see if he knows the next song. All right. Okay. Here we go. Greg, if you'll, uh, this is a very well-known song. goes way back. If you know the song, raise your hand. Got a couple. Say We've got it a lot together. of hands out here. This old this house. Old house. Let's give Dr. Geem All right, his there album. You go. Thank you, Dr. Geem. I appreciate that. Thank you, Randy. You know, I didn't tell you that this is the track that you would be singing to if you were a heritage singer. But no one would have come up if I had said that. It is so nice to have you here and to look forward to a house and a whole evening of praise and music, and the Lord has promised to be in this place. When I was young, I used to learn the harmonies, but more than that, the Spirit of Jesus would talk to me during these songs. That's going to happen tonight, friends. Tonight, the Holy Spirit's going to talk to you and ask you to, to consider your life and your walk with Jesus, and it'll be full of joy, no judgment, just love and grace and the peace of Jesus Christ. Amen? Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your love. Thank you for the music. And thank you for the heritage singers and the ministry that just reaches our soul. It brings us to praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Won't you welcome Val Mace and the heritage singers?
get you excited? I don't know what. Okay, let me open up my Bible here. Uh, I was reading the story of the woman who'd been sick. For 12 years, she had bled. And back in that culture, in that time, first of all, she was a woman, so she, there was a strike against her for that. And because she had bled for so long and had tried to get medical help and she spent every last penny she had on it and she still could not be cured. And she knew that Jesus was coming to town. My favorite version of this story is actually in the book of Mark. I like it because you get a little bit more detail in Mark. Mark, 24, Mark 5, 24, it says that Jesus was out in the crowd and people followed him. And a woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She'd suffered a great deal from many doctors. And over the years, she'd spent everything she had to pay, but she had not gotten any better. In fact, it was even worse. She heard about Jesus so she came up behind him through the crowd and she touched his robe because, she, this, is, this is the part right here, she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. How about that for some faith, right? Just touching his clothing. Immediately when she did that, the bleeding stopped and she could feel in her body that she'd been healed. And Jesus knew that someone had touched him because the Bible says he felt that some healing power had gone out of his body. And he turned around and he said, who touched me? You remember this part of the story? The disciples said, well, there's crowds of people everywhere. We're, they're all pushing on each other. And, and how can anyone not touch you? And he said, no, somebody, somebody touched me. And he found that broken, dejected, rejected, sad woman who had traveled to see him and she knew, she knew that Jesus wouldn't even have to lay his hands on her. She just had faith that if she could touch him, she would be healed. Oh, I love that so much. I love that so much. Her faith, her faith is really what brought her the healing that day and by Jesus recognizing her in front of the crowd, people could see that it wasn't just physical healing that had taken place for her that day. It was more than that. She was, she was fully, fully restored, body, mind, and soul. And I love that. I love that so much. If you've come here today and you are looking from a touch for Jesus, from Jesus because you feel rejected, you feel not included, you feel different, you feel sick in your heart or in your mind or in your body, today I want you to reach out to Jesus in faith, knowing that he's going to supply your needs because he loves us so much. He is for us, not against us. He is for us. Reach out to Jesus today because he's waiting for you.
Ah uh... 
Oh
Would you welcome up my beautiful wife, Holly? We've been, been doing this song for about 20 years, I think. All right. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for your Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? find myself standing in the sun I can only imagine when all I will do is forever and ever forever worship you yeah. I can only imagine yeah. I can only imagine many of you are so grateful for the hope of heaven? I know, I know we are. In Revelation 21, John describes a vision where he saw a new heaven and a new earth because the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. He saw the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, like a bride adorned for her husband. And he said, I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them 
as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away, and I am making all things new. But here on earth, so often we find ourselves asking questions that we never get the answers to. The whys of life. Why God? We have a longing to understand the things we don't understand because we've come to believe that that's where we're going to find our peace when we finally have an answer. So we come to God with all of our whys and our prayers are little more than frustrated questions. But most often these cries of the heart, they leave us unchanged. Listen, God has so much grace for our frustrations and our disappointments, and we can boldly approach his throne of grace. He says that. Yet, we approach that throne with humility and surrender, because where there is humility and surrender, there is transformation. It's the childlike heart of trust that finds rest and peace in his presence, even when we don't get the answers to our questions. I've heard it put this way. If we want the peace that surpasses all understanding, we must give up our right to understand. As long as we hang on to our whys with our hands tightly gripped, we will not be in an open-handed posture to receive the good things that the Father longs to give. The challenge, then, is to let go of the whys, to open our hands and not ask why, but ask what. The why questions tend to leave us discouraged and unsure. And many times they will lead us down the path of unbelief. But the what questions lead us to the still, small voice of God where his love is felt and his peace can be found. So let's put aside our whys and pray what? What, God, do you want for me? What do you want to do in me and for me right now? Lord, what do you want me to receive from you in this circumstance, in this season? Father, what is it that you want me to know? Sometimes we just can't perceive an answer, so we need to keep, so we need to try asking a different question. Because there are truths that we can know, even when we don't understand. And when we focus on what we do know, what we can know, what he wants us to know, it builds our faith, strengthens our hope, and gives us peace. The prophet Isaiah wrote that you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. So when we don't understand and we don't have the answers that we think we need, the best thing we can do is fix our eyes on the Savior and let go of all the whys and ask instead the what. What do you want to do? And what do you want me to know? because we know that God is good. We know that his love never fails. We know that his mercies are new every morning. We know his faithfulness never ends. We know that he is our firm foundation, the rock on which we stand. We know that he is our shelter and our refuge. We know that he is the peace speaker who can calm the storm with one command. And we know that he is the giver of life abundant and the provider of everything we need. We know that he is the healer and the shepherd and the comforter and the friend. We know he is the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and the risen Lord who defeated death and gives us eternal life. This is who we know him to be. As humans, we are so, so limited in our capabilities. 
But our good Father is not. He is able. Ephesians 3.20 tells us that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that's at work in us. He alone is the only one perfectly able to do and to give and to be everything we need. And he alone is able to take what the enemy meant for our harm and use it for our good. Romans 8.28 says that those who love God and are called according to his purpose can know that God is able and will work all things together for our good because he loves us, because he is able. with rain emotions run together in a flood of doubt and pain we prayed as best we can now we must leave it in his hands yet I know when my eyes fail to see
The Lord speaks to me through those songs. He does every time, ever since I was a kid. There's something about music that touches the heart, kind of bypasses your rational brain. That's why we have to be careful with it. We need to encourage our young people to sing for Jesus, to listen to music that's edifying. I can imagine the father sitting on his throne and his son at his right hand. And I can, I can see Jesus saying, Father, just a minute. Look down there and see your creatures worshiping you, singing at the top of their lungs. I just love that. And I hope that you do too. I like to be honest, friends, when, when it comes time to, to ask for an offering. I like to be honest and let you know what the arrangement is. So every November, 
the Heritage Singers comes down free of charge, knowing full well that the offering we collect is all they take from this church. And before they take it, we, we take a percentage to cover our costs. That has been the arrangement. So that's why we get up and we invite you to be a part of tonight's program by giving a generous donation, a generous offering to the Heritage Singers. It's unthinkable to have free concerts anymore. It's unthinkable. Who does that? Max was pretty, pretty insistent on it, and he just said, we're going to lean on the goodwill of God's people. Friends, if you will support the Heritage Singers tonight with a gift, a love offering, and afterwards you're going to hear a little bit uh, about how we can take some of their products home and to be a part of their ministry that way. We would sure appreciate it. Loma Linda has a very special relationship. If Randy was here, he would say this. We have a very special relationship going on 40, 50 years with Heritage Singers on this platform, praising the name of God and lifting him up. And we want to continue that. There's no end in sight. We, we love our partnership with the Heritage Singers. So we're going to ask you to be generous, and we're going to ask the Lord to bless you right now as you reach into your purse and your, your wallets and thank him for his goodness. Father, you have blessed us. Help us that we might be a blessing to the Heritage Singers as they have been to us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to invite the deacons to come forward. And when you have an opportunity, please support the Heritage Singers. I think Cousin Val is going to come out and show us some of the, the cool things that we get to enjoy. Um, I have everything they offer. Let's just put it that way. And Val and, and uh, Miguel, come on out. Miguel came up to our youth room, our junior high room today, and sang with Marcelo and I. And we just had the greatest time in praise. I want to thank you for that. Oh, I had such a good time ministering to the junior high. It was. You have an awesome group of youth here. The Doug. Lord has blessed. So awesome. Well, Val, we brought a lot of these guys. So talk to us about this wonderful, wonderful bear. Okay, remember a couple years ago I told you we were out of these? We've been out of them for a few years. And we were able to... To order some, and they just came in a couple weeks ago. And we don't have as many as we normally have, but we do have a limited supply. And we brought a trailer full, so don't disappoint me. You guys wanted these bears. They're here for you tonight. <laughs> yeah, please take one home with you tonight. It is the Christmas se season. They sing 20 songs. It, it'll babysit the babies for you, I'm telling you. I have two of my own. Look at that. So please take one, and I, Val, you were, we were talking in the back, and we were saying how this product that we are selling tonight, the CDs, the books, the, the microphone that we're about to introduce, the bear, it supports the ministry of the Heritage Singers. It keeps us on the road. It keeps us doing ministry. So please, we do not want to take these bears with us. Come out to the multipurpose room and buy these bears. Speaking of the microphone, can I talk about this guy? The microphone, we, we introduced it about um, not too long ago, brand new microphone. It plays all the songs that are in that bear, 20 songs. But not only that, it actually, you can plug it in and you can, and um, it's a Bluetooth. You can plug in all the Heritage Singers because I know, I know that somebody out here has been dreaming for this microphone and you don't no longer have to use that hairbrush that I once used back in the day pretending to be a Heritage Singer. So you can now legit be a Heritage Singer. It even says Heritage Singers on the mic. It's a great kid's Christmas present. My kids have it. As a matter of fact, hey, and Elise, you want to come show it? No? Yes, come, on. come on. Come and show it. Come and show it. Okay, Noah, you come and show it. You come and show it. You're going to show it? You're going to show Let's get that mic that's queued up that Mama has it all ready for you. Tell Noah, show us how it works. Can you, here it comes. Can you sing it now? Oh, he wants the real mic. This little light of mine. He 
he's, he, he's, he didn't get his shyness from you, Dad. That's no, well, sure. uh, no, he, he did not get his shyness. Like, come on, Annalise, well, you want to sing it? No. She has decided to be shy, and that's okay. That's okay. Good job, Noah. Good job, Noah. You want a Noah singing? Yeah, good job, buddy. You did great, buddy. You can applaud one more time. He likes that. Oh, thank you, Noah Bear. So thank fun. You. Spe speaking of, hey, I, I, I uh, want to talk about re something real quick. M Miguel's such a great dad. Uh, I wrote a book this last year called The Power of a Dad, and uh, I'm re really excited about it. Uh, for years, Holly and I have talked about uh, stories that we see or things we see on the news uh, realizing the unbelievable power that a dad has to either really build up culture or really tear down culture. Uh, and so I wrote this book as a call to men to step up and love sons and daughters really, really well with the heart of a good father, the heart of our perfect father. Uh, and I truly believe that when men do that, that, our culture would be completely transformed. Do you guys believe that tonight? So I would love if you came by and, and uh, said hello to me tonight. I'll be also in that room, and I'll have these books for you. I'd love to send you home with, you know, a whole stack if you want them. Uh, please do that. Come and see me. Uh, but let's keep singing. We, we're going to do an old fun one. Uh, it, you might need to get on your feet for this one. In fact, let's do that. Let's stretch it out just a little bit. Would you stand up with us? Come on, Greg. Start that track. Oh, happy day. Let's do it.
Did you know it's your baby boy? One day you walk on water. Mary, did you know it's your baby boy? Would save our sons and daughters. Did you know it's your baby boy? to start the Christmas season, right? I love that song. It's so good to be here praising the Lord with you this evening. My name is Miguel Verazas. Um, grew up not too far away from here, down in Palm Springs, California, just down the road. Actually went to school at Mesa Grande Academy, just not too long. Oh, there's some Mesa Grande people out here. I love it. I love it. It's so, so awesome to be home and with family. Um, you saw one of my, uh, my young ones. I don't know if they're going to be, they're going to be, Annalise, you want to come up here? Come on up here. And uh, we'll introduce these little guys. Come on, guys. There they come. Annalise just turned six. She turned six and she's in kindergarten and she's loving kindergarten. Look at that smile, my boy and my girl. Let me tell you, Annalise, are you loving kindergarten? Oh, she's not going to speak today. And this is Noah. He's going to be turning two, December 6th. I remember one concert. We were really, really pushing it there. I was here, and uh, we, I made it. I made it. But let me just tell you, these, these two little ones are just the love of my life. And my wife, I got to give my wife a big shout out because she does a great job with these kiddos. My wife over there. Ashley, you've been married for 13 years. Yes, buddy, we've got to tie your shoes. But these are, these are, these are awesome. And my, my awesome kiddos love them to death. And I'm also, I'm so excited that my, my family, my wife's family is here this evening. And I'm not going to embarrass them all, but I will embarrass the nephews and nieces. My nephews and nieces, will you please stand where you're at? 
Please stand, you guys. They're here supporting. Love you guys. Thank you so much for coming out. All right, guys. Thank you for coming up. It's so good to be here praising God. Thank you for... And uh, Noah wants to be, wants to stay up here. Thank you so much for coming and praising God with us. Good evening, everyone. My name is Cindy Hafner. I'm originally from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, but I make my home in the Sacramento Valley with my wonderful husband, Eddie, who's out there and he hates when I ask him to stand. Stand, honey. Where are you? Oh, he's over there. Wave. He's so tall. And also, I'm so excited that my beautiful daughter, Amanda, in fact, she sings on that little CD that you have on the microphone and the bear. So I'm proud of her. Um, she's here with her wonderful husband. They have a three-year-old boy, James, and a four-month-old new baby, uh, Jacob. I wish James would come up here, but Daddy said don't do it because he won't leave. So anyway, I'm excited that they're here. Um, I started singing with the group about 43 years ago, and I I was only two or three, I don't know. <laughs> I've been so blessed to be a part of this ministry um, that Max and Lucy um, started 53 years ago. So we are um, honoring him and keeping up his legacy, and we are so proud to be able to represent Jesus Christ, our Lord, in song. So thank you so much for coming, and um, we'll see you next time. <laughs> oh, hello. Don't you love the Heritage Singers? Give them a hand. Come on. It's such a blessing to be home today. This is home for me. My name is Marcelo. I live in East Highland not long ago, not, not long from here. But I'm actually from Chile, South America. Wow. Any Chileans here? Any? There's always one or two. Well, half Chileans. Or anyways. So I moved here a few years ago. I work at the uh, Loma Linda Medical Center. My wife, she's here. Her name is Betty Sue. She teaches at Loma Linda Academy. Honey, please stand up and wave. Beautiful, blonde, green eyes. <laughs> Wonderful teacher, mentor to many, lucky for me, wife to one. <laughs> and also, uh, my kids are here. They ask me to please have them stand up and wave. So please, <laughs> they asked me to do that. So here you go, guys. <laughs> Emma, Madison, and Ethan, love them. They are my family, and it's such a gift to be here in this wonderful season of... Uh, uh, of joy and everything, you know, we just had Thanksgiving, wonderful food, you know, a lot of food. I just was telling some of them that I, I joined a, a GM six months ago and I haven't seen any results, so I'm going to go there in person tomorrow <laughs> and see what's going on, because I don't know what's the deal with that. Thank you for being here. God bless you, everyone. Marcelo's always good for a joke. <laughs> He's a good jokester. Uh, my name is Melody Davis, and I've been singing with Heritage since 1994. And um, my mother's here tonight, but she probably does not want to stand up, so I'll just say that she's here. <laughs> um, my daughter, our daughter, first of all, I am married to Tim Davis. Um, we live in Los Angeles, not too far from here, but our daughter Summer's here. You can stand up, Summer. Uh, 19. And our son is here as well with his fiance, who happens to be named Annalise Mace. Pastor Doug and I are going to be related. Go ahead, stand up, you guys. Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> We're excited. Wedding coming uh, in the spring. Anyway, it's so good to be here tonight. Thank you for coming out. We love a full house, and um, we're just glad you're here. So Merry Christmas. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tim Calhoun, and I live right here in Loma Linda, California, with my, lo hey, yeah, with my lovely... <laughs> Give Loma Linda, Linda a hand. Yeah, there we go. All right, all right. Um, 
I live here with my lovely wife and my three sons. My wife and my youngest actually went to Northern California with a relative for a baby blessing up there. But my, my middle and my older's here, Aiden Maxwell, stand up. Yeah. There goes my middle's here. I've been singing with um, Heritage Singers since 1999, and I sing tenor. And thank you all for coming this evening. Good evening, everyone. My name is Shani Jadil, and I am originally from Sydney, Australia. But thank you. But a home for me now is just down the road in Redlands, where I live with my husband and my son, who is not going to be home very much longer. That's making mommy sad. He's growing up. Um, since everyone's making their family stand up, I guess I'll just make mine stand up too. Um, honey, if you're looking at your phone, put it down and stand up and wave to everybody. That's my husband, Byron, and my son, Matthew. Best things that ever happened to me, those two boys right there. Love them. Um, I started singing with the group about 28 years ago, right here actually in this town. It's my first concert. I was in college and uh, also had the privilege of singing with that guy in the green jacket since high school. We've known each other since way back. And uh, here we are together in this wonderful ministry, uh, sharing the love of Jesus with everyone. And uh, I sing alto, and thank you for coming out tonight. You haven't changed a bit, Shane. You haven't changed a bit. I'm Scott Reed. Uh, I live in Los Angeles as well with my incredible family. We were in the Midwest for a long time and just moved back a little over a year ago. We're, we're so grateful to be back here. Uh, you, you saw my beautiful wife of almost 25 years a, a little bit ago. Wave again, babe. And then uh, my two handsome boys. I'd bring them up. Uh, they're taller than me, both of them, but you guys at least stand up. Everyone else is doing it. So Brandon and Tommy, stand up and wave. There they are, the boys. Oh, man. They are handsome, handsome boys. Single. Single. Still single. Yep. Oh, Art, get your phone ready. Selfie. I need to take a selfie. Val, we, we've done this, uh, we did this, what, a couple years ago maybe, but we haven't done one this year yet. We're going to get a selfie for the Heritage Singers website, Facebook. We're going to do this. You guys ready? You, all, all you need to do is act like you're really excited. Group, stand there and face me. No, watch this. I'll do this. Just act so, you're just so thrilled to be here. On the count of three, you're just going to wave and cheer and smile. You guys ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Singers, you didn't look excited to be here, but. Well, I've been singing with the group since 94. This is my 30th year uh, with this amazing group, and we uh, are so glad uh, that you're here, and I'm so proud of Val uh, and Greg. Can you imagine as a parent, some of you in the room parents, for the thing that you feel most passionate about, that your kids are willing uh, to carry that on with such passion and joy. Uh, and let's just give Val and Greg a huge hand for carrying on the ministry of the Heritage Singers. I'm proud of you, Val. Hello, my name is Val Mace Mappa, and I've had the privilege of being a part of this ministry for the past 53 years, and we're still going strong. Thank you, Lord. Uh, running the sound tonight is my brother, and every night, actually. Um, his name is Greg Mace. He has his own sound company, GJM. Woo! Wave, Greg. Greg and I started out as two little kids on the bus, and now we're two old kids on the bus. No, <laughs> no, no, we're super excited that the, the ministry is continuing. My dad had talked to Greg and I and asked us um, if we'd be willing to keep it going, and um, we both said absolutely, and the singers too. I mean, if we had to start over, I think that answer might have been different, but all these guys are such an amazing team, and I'm so grateful for all of them. And people ask all the time, well, do you have openings? Can I audition? Well, you could audition, but no one's leaving. <laughs> so that might be a problem. <laughs> anyway, um, tonight my husband is here, uh, Art Mappa. We've been married 33? 32? 33. Somewhere in there. Uh, honey, stand up.
Art works full time with our ministry, and oh, sorry, Greg has a, a beautiful Brazilian wife at home and two amazing daughters, Bella and Amber. So hello to you, and Mama, if you're watching tonight at home, we love you. We'll be home tomorrow. Mama Lucy, yeah, my mom's doing good. Just turned 84 a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, a young 84. So tonight I also have um, my son. Austin, we don't have a band tonight, as you see, so he's actually in the audience with his wife, Chloe. And then there's someone I want you to meet. Come meet my grandbaby. This is Kate, Kate and James. Okay, this is Kaden. Make him smile. He doesn't get any attention. He smiles all the time, but just not at this moment. <laughs> Hi, baby. Okay, this little, this little baby has brought us so much joy, and we've, all of us have gone through a few years of kind of sad things in COVID, and, and this little man has just brightened our world up so much. So thankful for him. He's four months old. And his wife, um, my precious daughter-in-law, is Chloe. She's a uh, teacher, uh, kindergarten, first grade teacher. Chloe, stand up. Be proud of this little trophy you have. Yes. Bye, Kaden. Also, I wanted to thank Brian Mallory. He drove all those bears here just for you guys. So Brian needs a big hand for all his help. When, um, I see a lot of them left. My cousins, Annalise is the only, oh, there's Susie. Your other kids left? Oh, that's a bummer. Anyway, I, I'm just gonna point my cousins out here, uh, all the Mace kids, um, so love them and so happy that we can be together. And how about some more Christmas music? Okay.
stars are brightly shining It is the night of our dear Savior's birth Long lay the world in sin and error pining Till he appeared and the soul fell A thrill of hope, a weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, oh, hear the angel voice. For the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy, in grateful chorus raise we, let all within us praise his holy name.
that clearly bore his name he hardly could believe the words he read sing
Let's point it to him. We give you all the glory. Sing. We give you Come on, we give you all, and we give you all the glory. We give you all, we give you all the glory. Christ, the Lord. one more for you alone are worthy. Come on, for you. Just your voice to sing for you. the only one who is worthy. He was the only one worthy to take on a price, to take on a punishment that you and I could have never afforded. We still can't. We still can't. And like the song we sang just a minute ago, there's always a place at the table. There's a feast prepared for us. It's waiting on your own. Do you know why so many people don't go into the wedding banquet? It's because of shame, guilt. There's no way I would be invited. There's no way he would accept someone like me. There's no way there's a spot for someone like me at a table like that. But the Father didn't come for the healthy. You've heard Jesus say that, haven't you? Who are the people that need a doctor? The sickest who need a doctor. That's why I'm here. Jesus says, I'm here because it's the sick that need a doctor. And if you have struggled in your life with sickness, whether it's sin or uh, whether it's just stubbornness or whether it's pride, all the things that we have struggled with, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life, the Bible says. That's a sickness that Jesus came to pay the price for so that you and I would never have to again and so that our place at the table would always be set. And can I tell you about that table? There's no lack there. There's no lack there. You don't have to just eat a little bit so there's enough for everybody else. There's more than enough. There's more than enough. New grace every morning, more than enough. New mercies when the sun rises, more than enough, more than enough. And there's some of you tonight that he's asking you to come back home, but shame and guilt have kept you on the outside looking in, and you cannot believe that there might be a place for you at that table. And we would love nothing more. I know Max and the heritage, uh, that legacy that he left, he would want nothing more than for someone tonight to be willing to come home, someone tonight to have their heart change, their mind shifted, their perspective change altogether. Because I want to tell you something about that man, Jesus Christ, who's beckoning you, who's inviting you, who pursues your soul. There's something about that guy that you need to know. There's never been a fear that his love has not been able to cast out. There's never been a sin too great that his mercy does not cover. There's never been a son or daughter, you or I, far enough away that his arm cannot reach. There's never been a brokenness that his heart cannot heal. In fact, when it comes to those things, I'll, I'll be as bold as to say he's undefeated. He's He's the undisputed champion of those things. He's never failed, and he never will. 
And that's the God he invites you to come to him tonight. And guess what? Psalm 103 says that David says, he's gentle. He's slow to anger. He's abounding in love. He's not up there wagging his finger. He welcomes you. He invites you into the banquet table. And so tonight, I just want to pray for us real quick. And I want every, uh, every head bowed, I just want you to just stay focused with me here just for a second because this is important. And if you're someone here tonight that needs to come home, I just want you to, in your own way, it can be silently, it can be a whisper. I I want you just to pray this with me, okay? You can just repeat it after I say it. But Jesus, tonight I come back home. You welcome me. Like the father with the prodigal son who kept watch, and when he got his chance, he got up off that porch. He took off running after his son that was lost and had come home. And so, Jesus, we come home. I come home to you tonight. Jesus, I confess my sin. I confess my weakness, my brokenness, Jesus, and I ask you to heal me and forgive me. And now I thank you for that forgiveness that's done. It's done. It's done. Our sins are as far as the east is from the west. They are remembered no more. That's all we had to say is come to the Lord, say, God, would you forgive me of all my sin, all my guilt, all my stains, all my brokenness? Would you heal me? And we thank you for that, Jesus. We thank you for new life. We thank you that we don't war against Uh, things that are all around us that distract us, not against flesh and blood, but we war against principalities and powers. And when it comes to those things, there's no one like our God. There's no one beside you, Lord. There's no one above you. You are the all-time, undefeated, undisputed champion of love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Hello, we're here with Pastor Miguel Mendez, pastor of study here at our church. But 